What is up everybody? It is the Whizzler, and today I'm coming to you with another 101 series on Nick Fury. I'm gonna go over the basics and share with everyone why I believe this amazing God tier champion is so amazing even before he gets his signature ability. So a little bit about um, my background with Nick Fury, I took this champion to rank 5 before I even duped him and I never looked back and I fell in love with his core mechanics and today I'm going to share a little bit about why. Um, I'm going to go over some of his um, strengths, his weaknesses, where you might be able to use him and how it looks. I will start with his SIG ability and explain why it's so powerful. So it's Life Model Decoy and Life Model Decoy is a passive and it states when Nick would be knocked out, his life model decoy is destroyed instead, and he returns to the fight with a permanent Fury's Fury buff and stun immunity. Very powerful. However, Nick loses his infinity formula and begins degenerating 2.23%, that's that max signature level, of his health per second for the rest of the quest while above 30% max health. The destruction of Nick's decoy removes all effects and isn't affected by ability accuracy reduction. This, in effect, is ultimately an extra life for all intents and purposes with huge advantages on his second life. So it's highly desirable to have him awakened and he gains a huge bonus if he is. But before we come to the SIG ability and why that is so useful in many areas of this game. I want to talk about everything else and the basic mechanics of this champion. We'll start with Battle Scars. When striking a bleeding opponent, Nick's critical rating is increased by 233.33, and his attacks ignore 100% of physical resistance. While the opponent is not under the effect of a regeneration buff, all of Nick's bleeds are 100% more potent extremely powerful. Effectively, if your opponent is not bleed immune, your critical rating is constantly increased and you just utterly destroy them if they are not bleed immune because you're always going to be bleeding them. Let's talk about why. So basic attacks. Ending a combo with a light attack has a 100% chance to inflict a bleed dealing 1035.45 damage over one second. Now I know that doesn't sound like a very long bleed, but that's actually his power hit. And I'll share why in just a little bit. The second piece is landing any medium attack has a 100% chance to inflict a bleed dealing 57.53 damage over 6 seconds. Landing a heavy attack has a 100% chance to inflict up to 3 stacks of bleed each dealing 115.05 damage over 12 seconds. That is a great way to stack up multiple bleeds. When hitting into auto block, Nick is stun immune and has a 100% chance to inflict a bleed, dealing 115.05 damage over 12 seconds. Bye bye Medusa. Knocking down the opponent purifies Nick's non-damaging debuffs. So I'm going to pause right here and just share that these abilities alone, never mind some of the other things that I'm about to get into, are really, really amazing. So his ability to go into an auto block match and not have to worry about the auto block and if that opponent is also not bleed immune if they can bleed the auto block is completely off the table doesn't matter he's not going to be parry stunned now they will still initiate an auto block so keep that in mind if their auto block will actually enhance their abilities in some way that will um, still happen however they will be bled and then knocking them down purifies all non-damaging debuffs. So if he's up against a void, he can shrug them off as soon as he knocks them down. And you knock your opponents down with a heavy or a special attack. So keep that in mind. Internal bleed passive. So this is really where things start to get a little crazy if you can get one of these up. And I recommend getting one of these up as quickly as possible in as many fights as you can. If the opponent gets eight stacks of bleed, their bleed effects are removed and replaced with a passive internal bleed effect, which deals 6,212.7 damage over 30 seconds. Now, it's actually not a very uh, large bleed in the grand scheme of things over 30 seconds, 
but what it does next is why it's so powerful. While internal bleed is active, all the opponent's bleed debuffs have an increased duration of 0.2 seconds per tactical charge. That's really powerful. So let's talk about your tactical charges and why it's important to have an internal bleed up as long as possible. So tactical advantage charges. These are passive effects. Nick starts the fight with six charges when fighting an Avenger. Keep that in the back of your head. When Nick is struck, he has a 100% chance to gain one tactical charge, reduced to 25% against mutant opponents. So here we see the class wheel coming back into effect. Kabam is doing their best to really strengthen that class wheel with each champion introduction over the past, uh, I would say, 6 to 12 months. While Nick is under the effect of a Fury effect, tactical charge durations are paused. Put an asterisk next to that one. We're going to come back to that. Nick loses one charge every six seconds, decreasing to every four seconds while at or above ten total charges. Additionally, if the opponent performs a well-timed block, Nick loses one charge. So the goal is don't get parried and you won't lose charges. So here's what the charges do in addition to extending bleed duration. So we know that they extend bleed durations. That is a huge advantage by default. But now they also do some other things as you gain them. So at plus 5 charges, Nick's attacks can't miss or be evaded. All of your Spider-Man and Spider-Verse champions, as soon as you get 5, completely off the table. They will not be able to evade you. Anybody who has the miss mechanic built in, Ghost, can't do it. So you have a huge advantage. Wasp, same thing. So you got to get to 5, which is the lowest on the tier. At 10 plus charges, Nick's Purify effects now target all debuffs. So if you remember, it was just non-damaging debuffs before. All you had to do was knock them down. So at 10 or more, which it doesn't take too long to get to 10 or more, you can purify everything. And this is where he becomes somewhat suicide friendly. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, in the future. So at 15 or more charges, Nick becomes unblockable. And this is probably what he's most known for. This is what makes him so powerful. At that unblockable state, he can inflict bleeds. He can keep that internal bleed up. He can keep constantly wailing into the opponent with very little room for them to counter. It's very difficult when the opponent, when you're unblockable for the opponent to counter you. If you time your combos right, and you backdraft intercept, and you focus on just making sure you're baiting heavies and rushing in with every opening you get. And if you don't have an opening, make one. They block. Hold block, force them to block, and then take your opening right there. So at 20 or more charges, this is where things start to get interesting. All charges are removed and replaced with a Fury's Fury buff, which grants 4,141.8 attack rating for 10 seconds. All technical charge gains are doubled while Fury's Fury is active. So this is where the true power of Nick Fury comes in, is being able to get to 20 charges and then cycling through. So again, one of the things that I shared is I took him to rank 5 without the dupe. He had no ability to get that Fury's Fury buff without me getting to 20 charges. So one of the things that I recommend learning how to do is to get to 20 charges and then stay in the second cycle as long as possible. And there's a few different ways you can do that. Um, one is the Heimdall with the Fury Synergy, because if you remember, he won't lose charges. They don't decrease if he has an active Fury. It doesn't matter if it's his own or one that he gained from another means. So the Heimdall Synergy is very powerful. You just dash back at the beginning of the fight gain that permanent fury buff and you're ready to go you can get unblockable state pretty quickly you can get to 10 pretty quickly and shrug off your any any kind of debuff you have including your suicide debuffs if you have suicides on so the tactical charges are where nick really shines he can counter just about anything in this game bleed immune or not obviously if they can bleed they're done but if they can't bleed that's okay too. He can still counter them pretty powerfully with his 
sheer strength. You just want to get to that 20 charge state first and then build up your charges one more time to get unblockable if you need to. Otherwise, just stay in that state. Get to 20, get your fury up, and then get as high as you need to to win the fight. Because your attack is pretty much over the top at that point. One fury's fury will get you going. I did mention that I wanted to come back to his power hit the basic attack which is a light ending attack so it's ending a combo with a light attack has a 100% chance to inflict a bleed dealing 1035.45 damage over one second so after reviewing some of the base kit it's really important to understand why this is so powerful and here I'm going over our um, punching bag winter soldier and if you watch here after I get the internal bleed up, you'll see a couple of light ending attacks, the damage output is pretty significant. So at this point, you want to do as many of these in your fights as possible once you have internal bleed up. And the reason is, is every time you cycle internal bleed, that lasts for a good duration. But your tactical charges don't last anywhere near as long. So get the internal bleed up first. Get your tactical charges next. And while you're building your tactical charges, that's where you should be cycling your light ending attacks. So that's a good base cycle rhythm to get yourself into to kind of learn this champion and how his damage output can increase. And once you find yourself getting into a Fury's Fury rhythm and understanding how and when to use it and even double it or triple it at times, You'll notice when those light ending attacks, you can just back away. They're just going to kill the opponent because the bleed is going to last a little bit longer based on the number of charges you have, as well as if you have the deep wounds mastery maxed out. So that's really the power hit. Now if they're bleed immune, you're not going to want to do that. You're going to want to end your combos with a medium because it hits harder and it crits a lot. Um, even here in this Winter Soldier video, you can see he's critting quite frequently. I don't have any synergies in this fight. I brought him in alone. There's nothing really special about it other than he's got suicides on at the moment. Um, so you're taking recoil damage, but at the same token, that's him. That's him before he's his dupe even kicks in. His dupe has not done anything for you in this video at all. So... That is my favorite part about Nick Fury, is he's so powerful by himself, alone. And then you can add all of these other things on top, and you have an amazing gourmet champion right here. So let's talk about how you can earn charges by not getting hit. So the special one attack is your workhorse. This is where you can earn your tactical charges. So every time you perform this attack, you will gain four tactical charges. But it also does something else for Nick Fury. Um, it disorients the opponent, reduces their block proficiency by 50%, and defensive ability accuracy by 70% for 8 seconds. So that's that disorient debuff that we saw introduced. This debuff um, is pretty powerful, so especially if you don't have him awakened, it's very helpful because if you're not yet unblockable, their block proficiency is cut in half. So sometimes you'll hit into a block and then all of a sudden their block fails. So then you can just finish your combo and get another really, really powerful bleed off. So this is your workhorse. This is where you want to build your tactical charges up. Again, get as high as you can, get that fury active as quickly as possible, and then cycle where you need to be. Special 2, this one is also a very powerful move, and I tend to incorporate the Special 2 a lot um, once I get where I want to be with the Special 1. So Special 2, Nick slashes his opponent, causing up to 4 stacks of bleed. This is also a way to enhance the internal bleed and get it up faster. So this particular bleed will deal 575.25 damage over 8 seconds. So it's kind of in the middle of the road in duration compared to his other bleeds. It also has a 50% chance to stun the opponent for 3 seconds. Stun chance increases by a flat 10% chance for each of Nick's tactical charges. So if you have 5 or more, this is a guaranteed stun. Guaranteed. Which is huge. Being able to stun the opponent with a guarantee, very, very handy, especially in tough fights. Special Attack 3. Now, this one I don't use as much, but it is a heavy hitter. 
for smaller fights. If you're not in, you know, Labyrinth of Legends, if you're not in, you know, an Alliance of War, Alliance of War boss circumstance, you may not want to do this um, because the stun chain from the Special 2 and his bleeds are a little bit more powerful. Um, however, there are some cases where this might just end the fight for you. So Special Attack 3, this will gain additional attack if one or both of these different circumstances are enabled. The first one is, do you have Fury's Fury buff active? If it's active, and it has to be Fury's Fury, that has to be active, he will gain 4,602 attack on this particular special. Also, if internal bleed is up on the opponent, you gain an additional 4,602 attack for this particular attack. So this can be a pretty powerful like ending move, for you if you need to. It's also a good move to just completely turn the tide of the fight, or if you accidentally get pushed to a special three, just enjoy the damage. But ultimately, I don't use it as much as I um, used to now that I have my SIG ability um, as, as it is. But again, I wanted to focus on what Nick can do without being awakened. And I haven't even gotten into any of the other things that he might do for other champions on your team. I'm going to share a few of those videos in the future. But Nick Fury is a powerhouse. And I truly believe this is one of the best champions in the game in the current meta. Probably top one or two skill champions in the game right now. He's definitely up there with Blade and Aegon. Uh, one of my favorite champions for sure. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe below, and come back for more.